Well, hello once again. It's uh, just a great privilege to be before you this evening. And uh, we want to start off talking about how to live happily with your teenager. And we're going to change one of the words instead of saying happily. We're going to say how to live peacefully with your teenagers. Just because we're members of the same family, it doesn't always mean uh, that we get along well with each other. And so I know our teenagers, man, you know, when they're growing up, they're kids, they're two and three years old, they're so cute, and they just, you just love them, and, and the skin is soft, and they smell good, and, and you know, you just want to protect them, and hug them, and hold them, you want to do all of this stuff, and, and, and a lot of times, we want them to continue to, to stay small, you know, we just, we just love them like that, but they grow up, because all of us have to grow up, and we realize that as they grow up, they become more independent. And the more independent they become, it seems like the more they, they move away from and disconnect from us. And they're not disconnected from us. They're not moving away. They're just, they are developing like they're supposed to. They're supposed to be able to think for themselves, take care of themselves, make decisions, uh, have, uh, make choices, uh, receive direction, and all of this stuff. And so we, and, in, and understanding that, and I realize that when we grew up, a lot of times people, didn't, our parents didn't teach us this, and we didn't hear it, you know, unless we took a class in school, uh, we didn't hear this kind of teaching. And so we have to understand that uh, it, it's important that we understand what our kids are growing through. Notice I said growing. They're growing up. So at each stage in their life, we got to be able to uh, help them and understand them and help them get to the next stage, okay? And so that, that, that's our job as parents. So we have to understand that. Just because we're members of the same family, it doesn't always mean that we're going to get along well. But, but, but God will give us as parents. He'll put in us what we need uh, to be a blessing and to help lead and guide and train our kids. Uh, so someone, we, we, what we're saying here this evening is that someone in the house has to possess the wisdom and ability. Someone in the house, particularly a, an adult. So an adult in the house has to possess the wisdom and ability to do what? To manage, supervise, train, coach, and call into accountability the teenager living within the household. An adult in that house has to be able to do that. So that means that we've got to make sure we stay connected to the Word of God. We've got to continue to listen to the Word of God and listen so much so that God begin to drop little nuggets and teach us how. Teach us how. Teach us how to to deal with issues, how to deal with attitudes, how to solve problems, how to pick out battles, you know, what to deal with, what not to deal with, how to investigate. You know, um, there's just so many things that we have to learn as parents, and we have to be able to, we have to have the wisdom and the ability. So the first thing the parents need to work on is we need to work on uh, receiving wisdom. Wisdom comes from God. The Bible says if any man lack wisdom, uh, let him ask the God, and God's going to give us wisdom. And then we have to have the ability. So that means that we've got to work hard on our skill set. We've got to work hard on knowing how. We've got to work hard on uh, doing uh, what we learn to do. All right? And so we have to manage. We've got to be able to manage. We've got to be able to supervise. You know, a lot of, a lot of heads of households, they're, they're losing the battle with their teenagers because they're poor managers. They just don't know how to manage. They don't know how to supervise. And sometimes they have problems managing them on their own selves. They have problems managing their own life. So they've got to be able to supervise. We've got to be able to train, okay? You have to be able to train, train kids, train, train. Uh, that, that means that you've got to uh, go with them, uh, hold their hand sometimes, okay? You've got to say, look, you've got to show them. you got to show them. And then you have to back up and see if they have it. You have to coach them along the way. You know, you have to allow for them to make mistakes, and you have to allow for them to make mistakes with the same thing over and over again because we are creatures of habit, and we learn by rope. In other words, we learn by doing stuff over and over and over again. We have to learn how to forgive them. We have to learn how to build them up. We have to learn that they are not our property, okay, that they are they are human beings also. They have feelings. They have emotions. They know God, okay? They have goals and aspirations. They have disappointments. They get depressed. You know, they get to a point where they're frustrated and don't understand. And, and, and just like you don't understand them, they don't understand you as a parent. They don't understand us as parents. 
So we have all of these things that we've got to realize, and we have to uh, just have, have we have to understand. All right. So, but but the thing about it is, we have to make sure. So the, our, our job as adults, we have to make sure that we possess wisdom and ability to manage and do all these things. All right. And then the other thing I want to want you to understand. He says to manage, supervise, coach, and call into accountability. So we've got to be able to call our teenagers into accountability. All right? In other words, accountability here, uh, we're going to use the word answerability. They've got to be able to answer. But I won't say be able. They need to. Mm -hmm. They need to answer to somebody. They need to answer to an adult. They need to answer to you, to us. They need to answer to us as parents. Okay? Accountability, answerability. I don't care how uh, mature they are and, and how you trust them, they still have to have somebody to answer to. And they need to be able to answer to their parents. You know, if, they, if teenagers grow up and they're not answering to anybody, guess what's going to happen when they, they are grown and it's time for them to answer to, the na in the natural, their boss, okay? Well, it's time to answer to God. So you got to be accountable to God. Gotta be, we, have to be, we have to teach them to be accountable and answerable to us so that when they become adults, they can be accountable and answerable to God. Because you have to understand the way God works. God, uh, we have to, when God tells us what it is that we need to do and he lets us know all the things that we need to know, guess what? It's time for us to be accountable then. It's time for us to make decisions and obey. All right? So don't feel like you're being hard on your child when you're trying to get them or you're call, uh, making them make sure that they're accountable. That they have to answer. You got to answer to somebody. And every all of us on this earth have to answer to somebody. We have to answer to somebody, all right? If we if we are on uh, if we are on boss and so on and so forth, uh, ultimately we still have to answer to God. And so there must be someone in authority in the family that teenagers are obligated to answer to, give an account to, obey, all right, and satisfy in a code of conduct. Code of conduct. So, so in order for this to happen, <clears throat> there has to be some boundaries, all right? There has to be some boundaries set. must be some boundaries set in place. Parents must set rules, regulations, guidelines, and most of all, boundaries. And we're talking about you have to do this if you're going to what? Live peacefully with your teenager, all right? So... Um, when we talk about setting boundaries, we're talking about setting boundaries in regards to something. Setting boundaries as it relates to time, friends, hangout places, spending money, getting adequate and sufficient amount of rest, just to name a few. So we're going to talk about these things. All right, so let's, let's talk about setting boundaries when it comes to time. And so... We have to realize that our teenagers have to have time limitations, time limitations on how long, on how long they can play on the games in the house. Because if we let them, they'll play all day and all night. I said all day and all night. And some of us are letting our kids do that. And, you know, here again, we mentioned in the past teachings that, you know, your child been to school, they, they've had rigorous uh, activities and you know, they had to really stay on top of their academics and so on and so forth. So, you know, during the summer year, you want them to uh, relax and you want to reward them. But at the same time, you don't want them to get out of hand because, you know, it, it doesn't take long to form habits. And it doesn't take long to form bad habits. And when they form bad habits, guess what's going to happen? They're going to carry that over into the next school year. Or if they get ready to go to college, they're going to carry it over to college. Or if they get ready to go and work a job, they're going to carry those bad habits over into those jobs. So we've got to make sure that we set boundaries when it comes to them, when it comes to their time. All right? So they can't play, uh, they can't play, games, on, uh, they can't play games in the house all day long, okay, or outside the house, away from the house. In other words, we have to have, they must have a limitation on their recre recreational time. All right? And so you have to understand something. To play and to relax 24-7 is unrealistic. And it sends the wrong message to our teenagers. It sends the wrong message. We must teach them that time is valuable and also time is money. I'm going to say that again. Time is valuable. All right? And time is also money. And you have to understand that. You know, a lot of times there, when, you know, when you're wasting time, and, see those games are designed to, to take up your time and they're designed for you to get all entrenched in them 
So when that gets old, then you go and spend money and buy another one, okay? And, and, and so on and so forth. Now I don't even want to get into that. That's just a whole nother, that's a whole nother story right there. Okay, so the next thing we talk about here is it set boundaries when it comes to friends. And I know you say, well, I can't pick my child's friend. Well, you better, you better pick their friend. You better know who they're hanging out with. You better know who they're talking to. You better know who all of their friends are. You better know how much time they're spending with them and what they're doing, what they're doing. So we're talking to friends, choosing the correct friends. And then we have to look at their friends and we have to see, we have to, we have to uh, set boundaries and ask Ask the question, how well behave are your teenagers' friends? Okay, how well behave? What, what do they do? All right, do they get in the car and go somewhere and steal, steal out stores? Are they robbing folks? You know, are they sitting somewhere in an empty, vacant house, uh, shooting drugs and smoking weed and all this kind of, what, what are they doing? Okay, we, can, we need to know that. And you'll know if your child telling you the truth. You know, look, you know if they go off, want to go off, go away from home, uh, smelling real nice and fresh with perfume and cologne, and they come back smelling like something else. That's that's a clue. That's a context clue. You know, they've been somewhere they have no business. They, be, you know, and and some of them they don't understand. A lot of times, and and I, and I know y'all can can attest to this. Sometimes my teenagers go off, and you know they done done something they have no business when they come back. So they so nice and sweet. Why are you so nice and sweet and talking and got all this stuff? Uh, you, you act like you my best buddy now. You ain't hardly say nothing before you left the house. And now you're so nice and sweet and you just, you just want to be with me and sit with me and talk with me and stuff. What have you done? What, 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 what have you been into? Am I, am I getting ready to get a phone call? How many of y'all experienced that, especially when they came home and, and they knew they made a bad grade? I mean, you could get them to do anything, wash the car, wash the dishes, uh, clean the floor. They work all day long and all night long just to keep your mind. I've been there myself before. I didn't do too good on my report card. Boy, I was an angel in the house. But it didn't matter how, how, how majestic I was when that report card was revealed to my parents. It was time to pay. So we have to make sure that we, we set boundaries when it comes to friends. Okay, let's, let's talk about hangout places. All right, we're, and we're going to back up to friends. Says choose the correct friends, how well they behave. You know, we need to know how these teenagers are behaving. And do they have good manners and decent conduct? Can they be trusted? That's, the, that's what we need to ask. That's the questions we need to ask concerning our teenage friends, the friends that they hang out with, people that they hang out with. Okay? Because you don't want your child uh, aiding in a bed, and you don't want your child involved uh, and stuff. You know, there are a lot of kids right now in jail because they were with somebody. They didn't do it, but the person that they were with stole. The person that they were with shot, shot somebody. The person that they were with uh, robbed somebody. So, so you have to be careful. And, and look, one thing I like, I like about God is God has enough friends around in this earth that, you know, you don't have to just sell for anybody. You don't have to just sell for anybody. What you do is you just you make sure that you, yeah, I mean, there's enough people out there and kids out there where you can pick the right ones, okay? And it doesn't mean that you're better than them. It's just that means that you're not going in the, you're not going the same place they're going. And so, yeah, we have to, we have, and we have to teach our kids how to pick the right friends. All right, let's talk about boundaries on hangout places. As parents, it is unexcusable not to know where your teenager is. There's no excuse for us not to know where our kids are. Cell phones have tracking devices on them. I just, just, I just help somebody. So wherever they go and however long they stay, you can know. You can know when they deviate. You can know where they're going. You can know uh, where they're traveling at a certain given time. You can tell how fast they're driving. You can tell when they stop. You can tell at the location how long they've been there when they move and go somewhere else. It's all on the app. So there's no excuse. All right. Another uh, boundary uh, needs to be set when it comes to spending money. T uh, teach your teenagers. We got to teach our te teenagers. Teach your teenagers how to be disciplined in their financial spending, particularly when it comes to using credit cards and debit cards. They've got you. Look, to take to say, well, I'm not going to let my child uh, ever have a credit card till they get grown, good grown and probably married. I'm not going to ever let them have a debit card because I can't trust them. Well, what you have to do is you have to teach them. Teach them how to use it. You got to start somewhere. Teach them how to use it. Teach them the limits. Teach them, you know, what to buy. And teach them how often to buy. And sometimes even when your credit cards, you know, there are certain times a month 
uh, we, we're fortunate to where we have more than one. So certain times a month, depending on what we have on it, we'll use this one and not use the other one because it's going to come out later on. On this one, it might come out right away. The bill come out right away. But on this one, it's probably going to be three to four, four weeks before it comes out. But you got to teach them. They got to they gotta learn the responsibility. They have to learn discipline. They have to learn. And so we have to give them the lead way. We have to trust them enough. And, and I'm not necessarily saying uh, give them your card, but when they get of age or get a certain age, they can get their own card. Okay, guess what they need to have? Is somebody following me? Following me? Guess what they need to have? They need to have their own bank, bank account. They need to have their own checking account, their own savings account. And I think... Um, before they get a certain age, they could already have a savings account going. So you can be putting money in there. Put money in that savings account. Put money in your child's savings account. What you doing? You're teaching them to save. All right? All right? And then come a certain time, then, you, then they have a checking account to go with that. And then they learn how to balance their checkbook, write checks and balance the checkbook. They learn that at this particular time, this is all the money you have and you can't spend anymore. All right? Teach them that. You teach them that early. Uh, as they have a uh, checking account, uh, and then when they have credit cards, debit cards, guess what you're doing? You're building their credit. You start building their credit when they're young. All right? So when they get about age 21, 22, 23, uh, they can be responsible enough, and they can uh, go out and, and borrow money, and, and, and uh, you know, they can do furniture or whatever it, it, it is they need or want about that time. And they learn how to spend other people's money. In other words, they learn how to keep their cash money, learn how to keep their money in, in their emergency money, continue to build up the emergency funds, savers and checkings, okay? And then they can spend, uh, you know, to know how to use a credit card and, and have money in savings. So when the credit card becomes due, they can pay it off. If they don't pay it off, at least uh, they can pay a certain amount on it so where they, don't, they don't have to pay all these interest rates. So all of this stuff is very, very, very important. All right, so when it comes to money, we need, we need to be able to teach them how to, how to use a credit card and debit card. All right? One of the most important things, is, and this is very, very important, we've got to teach our kids how to set boundaries when it comes to getting adequate and a sufficient amount of rest. Adequate and sufficient amount of rest. Uh, teenagers can't stay up all night and function properly the next day. And so if they're working a part-time job, uh, they can put themselves and their coworkers at risk of injuries on the job. I've seen, I remember when I was young, we were not teenagers, we were early adults, young adults. And it was myself and, and some other individuals, we all went to the same church. And, and, I, and, and I saw the habit before we got the job. Some of these guys, they would stay up late, they stay up all night. They stand up like, you know, they don't have to go to work. And I watched them come and work, sleep. First of all, you had to be on time. You had to be on time. And if, and if you were late so many times, you got rolled up. If you had so many write-ups, you lost your job. Because you couldn't get out of the bed and get to work. And I watched these guys, I watched some of these guys time and time again lose their job because they stay up all night like they were single. They stay up all night like they just, you know, just, just was free, like it was the weekend during the week. Okay, and they come to work sleepy, come to work tired, okay? And then um, there was an area where I worked, it was production. Production meaning that you had to produce a certain amount of uh, material, a certain amount of supplies, uh, at a certain given, over a certain amount of time, all right? And so you had, they, you were time it. So, so you, might, you might do this particular job, you need to do, um, say, 10, piece in, 10 pieces produce, 10 pieces per hour, okay? You sleep or you tired, you producing five per hour. That's not going to wash, okay? Because you're in a parts department, and what you're doing these people in the, in the assembly department, they need your parts so they can put their stuff together and ship it out. All right, so not only is your production down, and then these people make mistakes. So when you start, uh, and I just don't know another word for it, when you start messing up parts, doing parts wrong and not doing them like they're supposed to, you, you, there's a write-up. And when you do it so many times, out the door. Why? All because you didn't get adequate amount of sleep and adequate amount of rest. Now, I can say this for some adults. This, 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 is, a good, uh, uh, this is good advice for parents. Sometimes parents, we think we're, we, you know, we're in the, uh, indivincible. Uh, you know, we, 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 we just, you know, like we Superman and Wonder Woman. But you ha we have to get rest too. There's, there are a lot of folks I know that are, that are dead and in the grave because they didn't get enough rest. 
They used to brag about, man, I, I, I get four hours of sleep a night. Really? That, that throws your body into a, a tailspin. That, that, that messes everything up. Your body needs rest so it can replenish itself, so it can rebuild itself, so, uh, so it can be healthy, so it can uh, heal itself, and all of these things. And so you have to realize you, you, you damage your body by not getting the adequate and proper uh, amount of rest. And we've got to do that. We've got to teach our teenagers that. If our teenagers see us stand up all night long and working all day, burning the candles on both ends, staying up late, working up, working up early, guess what they're going to do? They're going to do the same thing. And our health is important to us. Our body is the temple. We like to say that when it comes to smoking and drinking and all this kind of stuff. But when it comes to, to time management, when it comes to getting proper rest, we just, we just, we just throw that out. We feel like, well, the Lord going to heal me. The Lord going to take care of me. The Lord going to such and such and so. The Lord ain't going to do no more than what you do. He's going to help you do what you do. So if you want to stay up all night, he'll let you stay up all night. And if you want to go in and act like you don't have, you don't, you're not, you're in your, you don't, you're not in your right mind when you go to work, he'll let you lose your job over it. So I'm talking to somebody right now for you to go on and turn around so you can be healthy, so that you can keep your job, so that you can enjoy your life. But we're talking about how to live peacefully with your teenagers. And so we have to understand that we must teach all these things. And see, a lot of times parents don't like to teach things. They don't like to demonstrate things. They don't like to uh, set boundaries. And they don't like to hold their kids accountable because now they have to be accountable. Uh-oh. So there's a lot of things they don't want to do. But guess what? It's all good. Because we want to raise healthy, spiritual, uh, successful, prosperous children. That's what we want to do. And that's not automatic. It doesn't come automatic. You can bring them to church. You still got to teach them. You can bring them to church. You still got to train them. And I hope most of you in here, I hope when, when kids come to church, in particular mine, I hope you pouring into them. I hope you telling them the things that they need to do. I know that be, be dad is the pastor, but sometimes, you know, somebody else needs to say the same thing or more. It takes a village to raise a child. So we need, and, and, and that's why we turned out because everybody in the neighborhood could talk to us and tell us what to do as children. And they could, the neighbors could whoop us if they wanted to. You try to whoop a child now if you want to. Hmm? You, 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 you call yourself, you call yourself uh, going to whoop somebody else's child and see how quick you go to jail. But, but that's what we need. That's what we need. We need to make sure. That we're telling, and see, there's a way to talk to kids. There's a way to talk to kids. You know, one thing I realized? I realized that um, when I was growing up, when other parents talked to me, I heard them louder than I talked, than I heard my parents. You know, I did, <laughs> oh, this is funny. I did what my parents told me to do because I didn't want no beating. When somebody else told me that were not my parents, it was, you know, it was, it was fine. I kind of received. I was like, you know, that makes sense. Okay, okay. And so we, we've got to make sure that we don't lose our kids to the street. We've got to make sure. We've got to make sure. How much time do we have? I think we're just about out of time. I want to say this before we, before we move. Um, we need to make sure that, uh, just one more other thing, that, that, that we have, uh, that, that, that we teach them how to tidy up the bedroom and deal with them dirty clothes. Mm, I figured somebody would give me just a little bit more time to talk about this. Untidy bedrooms and dirty clothes. We got to teach order in the bedroom, along with good personal hygiene. Got socks and underwear and dirty clothes and dirty shoes all over the place. Teenagers, we, they got to learn. Look, we're not their maid. You're not their maid. Make them clean it up. Make them pick it up. Make them put it in the proper place because on the job, they're going to have to be organized. So start with the bedroom. Make up the bed when they get out of it. Teach them how to make up. Now, they, it's not going to happen every time, but teach them how to do it. Tell them they need to do it. Uh, 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 keep, keep clean clothes hung up and dirty clothes in the clothes hamper. It's so hard for them to do that a lot of times. It's hard for some of us to do it. I know some of us, when, you, some of you, uh, when we first got married, you know, if one partner was clean and the other one just, it didn't really matter. Wherever they took them off and dropped them, that's where they stayed. It was just like, you know... I, and so you had to work through that. You had to work through falling over shoes in the middle of the floor. You had to work through uh, all kind of stuff. 
And so we got to get it right so we can teach our kids. Otherwise, it's going to be chaos. And think about how many families got a divorce because they couldn't get along with keeping their stuff in the right place. Just got tired of it. I just can't live like this no more. I can't deal with this no more. So, so, so they need to be taught how to, how to line up their shoes, line them up, put it, get them out of the middle of the floor, especially the walk path. And then we need to remember this. Remember that your teen is entitled to their privacy, and they should be responsible for their own room, but don't allow them to lock the door. What you locking the door for? Your parents are in the house. Who you scared of? What you doing that you got to lock the door? What, what, what's that about? So don't, don't allow them to be locking no doors up in there. That's your house. They ain't paying no bills. Teach them how to wash dirty clothes. Separate. Okay, teach them how to wash dirty clothes. I didn't say that they're going to wash the clothes all the time. A lot of times, you know, you're trying to help them. You're trying to help them. Some of us are trying to help them get on out the house. So, so, so you want to help them. So all you can do when they're working, you wash their clothes. Whatever you need to do to help them to do what they need to do so they can get some money so they can grow on up and get on out of the house, you're willing to do. But we got to teach them how to wash clothes. We got to teach them how to separate clothes. I know some grown folks don't know how to separate clothes. They just put them all together and throw them in the wash machine, and they got all kind of colors and got all kind of stuff going on. That is not the way you do. You got to separate clothes. You got to separate the whites from the darks. You got to separate the whites. You got to have dark dress, dark regular, and light dress. And some of that stuff is in between. And then there's no issue because they got color guard. They got all this kind of stuff. They got the parts and all that that you drop that stuff in there and those colors won't mix up and all this. You got to know whether to wash it in hot water or cold water or warm. And cold. You got to know what teach them. You know how to do it. Teach them how to do it. It ain't going to hurt them. It ain't going to make no girly, girly men out of our young men and boys. They need to learn how to wash and clean for themselves. I know somebody said my time up. And so all we're saying is this, you know, teach them, teach them how to vacuum the carpets and mop the floor, wood towel. And all we're simply doing is Proverbs 22, 6. Teach a child to choose the right path, and when he is old, he will remain upon it. That's all we do. Can I get some help? So next week, we're probably going to, you know, we're just, we're just asking God to, to, to keep us in the vein of, of talking to our kids and teenagers and, and family matters and family relationship because that's what this ministry was built on and founded on is the family coming together. So we'll be back next week. Uh, pray that God will continue to bless you and that he will send us a word that we can all be blessed by. God bless you. We'll see you next time.